Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, on this week's episode, we have John Keatley. He is an advertising and celebrity portrait photographer. He shot all kinds of interesting people, including Anna Leibovitz and Sarah Palin for her book, Going Rogue, Andy Samberg from Saturday Night Live, and all kinds of other people. He also has some really inspirational shots that he took in Liberia. So thank you so much for joining us today, John. It's really a pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, you bet. Well, before we start, we really want to dig into a lot of the, uh, the type of photography and the people that you shoot. It's very interesting. But before we do that, I'd really like to have you explain to us the type of photography that you shoot and uh, just give us a high-level overview of uh, the cameras and lenses and some of the gear that you use. I shoot people primarily, and I would describe myself as a stylized portrait photographer. I use a digital medium format camera, the Hasselblad H3D2. I use that for my portraits and ad work and when I'm doing documentary or something that requires being uh, just faster, uh, I use a Canon 5D Mark II and um, with the Hasselblad I use two lenses primarily, I use the 80 and the 50 and for the Canon I have, my go-to lens is probably either the, the 50mm 1.4 and the 35mm L series. I also use the 70 to 200 quite a bit if I really want to get back from my subject. Yeah, it's actually one of my very favorite lenses as well. Um, well, uh, in your photos, it, you talk a little bit about, uh, and on your website, you talk about uh, that you actually work hard to leave some things out of your photos. Can you explain that to us? Uh, what are you leaving out of those photos to make them so effective? When, when somebody's just smiling in a photograph, the viewer thinks, oh, I, I can identify with that. They're smiling. I know exactly how they feel and what's going on in the image and they move on to the next one. But when there's something slightly off or when the, when the person seems void of emotion, there's something about that where the viewer feels like I need to understand what is going on and it causes them to continue to look and sometimes it causes confusion which I enjoy uh, but other times it just causes a, a sense of exploration. and. I love hearing the stories. Everybody thinks they know exactly what's going on. They'll come up with their own story and it might not be what I intended, uh, but I love that sense of exploration that it creates and I find that it, it creates uh, more attention to the photograph uh, rather than just giving everything to everyone. It, you have to work to, to appreciate a little more. Well, let's talk about um, the, some of the subtleties that you use with your lighting. You have a really diverse lighting style. Uh, and so there's really, um, you know, just a bunch of different styles for all of your portraits. How do you approach lighting a subject? How do you uh, think through, okay, here's this person who's a comedian or somebody who's very serious. How do you take those personalities and then match the lighting to them? It depends on the mood, the subject, and the story. Uh, does it need to be dramatic? Does it need to be bright and poppy? And um, I try to take all those things into account as well as just responding to what's in front of me when I'm shooting. Sometimes something will happen and I'll just feel, you know, we really need to change this or move it. And um, there's definitely, my lights, when I'm on a shoot, they're not set. They, I have things moving frequently because I like to get variety and experiment also. Well, speaking of experimenting, I did see a series of photos that you shot of the famous photographer, Annie Leibovitz, and uh, she was moving and doing all kinds of interesting things with her hands. Can you tell us what it was like to shoot her and uh, just the interaction and, and how you lit that? Just tell us about that experience. I decided to do a simple studio portrait, but I wanted to try to make something that would be very striking and bold and um, powerful. And so Annie was probably the most willing to experiment of anyone I've ever worked with. She was really interested in making it a great picture. She listened to my ideas and was very willing to try just about anything. But she also really worked at trying something different and she didn't seem guarded at all, which I really appreciated. That's not something that you get very often with anyone, let alone a celebrity. There are a, a couple of people that you have taken portraits of um, people like Sarah Palin, you shot her for the cover of her book. Um, the Tea Party founder, uh, Kelly Carinder. So when you're shooting, not specifically those two people, but people that have a really strong identification with a specific ideology, 
it, does that enter your brain that maybe by shooting those people, you're going to be typecast as somebody that is also associated with that ideology? Um, is that something that you consider when you take on projects with somebody that, that is, uh, has such popularity as being um, for or against something specific? That's a good question, but I would say I probably think about that more after I've photographed somebody than before the shoot. Usually when I get an assignment or a project to photograph someone of note, it's, it's more just a feeling of excitement uh, and appreciation for the opportunity to photograph someone who is in the spotlight. And certainly when you photograph someone who's well known like that, it usually helps put you in the spotlight to some extent also. And there's always going to be people who might think, oh, you're aligning yourself with that person, but I would, I would venture to say most photographers would probably photograph anyone of note, no matter what their thoughts or their platform are. We're interested in people, we're interested in stories. I, when I photograph someone, I'm not saying, let me tell your story and scream it from the mountaintops. I want to help you with what you're doing. It's more, I want to create an image of someone who is doing something interesting, someone that people want to see and know about. And I, in my mind, I'm not aligning myself one way or another. So, so again, it's, it's something you, you, you do consider, but never to the point where you would turn down a job because you're afraid of what might come from that. Well, speaking of uh, people and stories, some of the, the, the stories that I found most compelling in your work are the shots that you've taken in Liberia. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing in Liberia and uh, what that means to you? I was recently hired by Mere Bottles to go to Liberia with a team and photograph two wells being installed in villages where they didn't have access to clean water. And it was something I was immediately excited about. Mir has a campaign where every bottle they sell, they provide clean water to one person for an entire year. And so this was a trip to build the first two wells that Mir was funding. And so they wanted to they wanted to create an ad campaign around those two projects to really get the word out and show people what it is that they're trying to do. We went to Liberia in January, just a couple of months ago, and we were there for about eight days. Um, it was really a dream assignment because I had very specific uh, shots that we talked about, mostly revolving around the building of the wells and using the wells and um, some of the people, but I also had incredible freedom to explore and photograph whatever I wanted to photograph, basically. Um, so I ended up taking a lot of portraits um, when I had time and there was various people that I met. Some people we just walked up to them and met them and photographed them. Some people we formed relationships with over the course of the week and photographed. And those pictures are really the ones that stand out to me from that trip. So while it, while it was an assignment, it felt very much like personal work to me because of that freedom I had to photograph whatever I wanted. One of the one of the stories that came out of that trip was there was a, there was a school there that we were told about, and they had several students who couldn't afford to go to school, but the school was taking them on. But they needed they needed funding. We went to the school one morning, and I took portraits of several of the children. And I was my first thought, to be honest, was I'll just take some quick snapshots and. It'll be enough to show people the children that need sponsorship, but quickly I realized they had an opportunity to take a really great portrait of each of these kids, and so we set up um, we set up in an area that I wanted to photograph them in, and those ended up being really I think the best portraits of the trip. And after we came back, I put up a quick blog post and I posted one of the portraits uh, of a boy named Zachariah, and by the end of the day, we had seven kids sponsored. It was just an incredible, it was incredible to see people care for these kids and show concern and want to do something. And that experience has really got me thinking about what else can we do? What else can be done with photography like this? What kinds of opportunities can we create to not just find sponsors for kids who need to go to school, but so many other things, education, clean water, and I think we have a great tool in photography where we can help bring awareness and also use photographs to draw people in and allow them to, to make a difference as well. Well, that is very inspirational and uh, 
uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to know what's happening uh, in that effort. So is there a space or uh, a place people can sort of um, watch as you progress, not only in your photography, but in, as you are working in Liberia and maybe some of the future projects you're working on? Where can people find your work and stay in contact with you? My time in Liberia made a big impact on me, and it's definitely something that I'm going to be focusing a lot of my time and efforts on in the near future as well as down the road. The best place to keep up with what's going on and what I'm doing would probably be on my blog, and the address is keatleyphoto.com slash blog. There's a, a number of projects that are in the works right now. I don't have a lot of specifics that I can talk about, but uh, definitely if you keep, keep up with um, what's going on in the blog, you'll, you'll be apprised of everything. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us today and being on the show. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Of course. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me. Well, you bet. Well, remember, if you want to see more of John's work, you can go to KeatleyPhoto.com and you'll find his uh, portfolio and blog and everything you need to stay in touch with his work and see more of his inspirational photos and his whimsical and celebrity photos. It's a great site, so I highly encourage that you check it out. Well, remember, if there's somebody that you'd like to see here on how they do that, you can email your suggestion to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.